welcome to the coast today to take part in a fine art photography challenge which has been set by fellow photographer and friend Gareth Thanks. We'll go and have a chat with in just a minute or so. So it should be an absolutely cracking day at one of West Wales' most spectacular locations. It's got about six hours until we get to sunset and the light fades. So it should be a cracking day of photography. So let's go see if we can make some fine art shots today, whatever that means. So I've been searching this wonderful area for a while now and I've got a few ideas for some shots already, but I think as a whole, landscape photography kind of overlaps into fine art photography quite a lot, doesn't it? And it kind of got me thinking, what the heck is fine art photography anyway? So for what it's worth, here's my interpretation of fine art photography, which I guess is subjective. Anyway, here goes. So I think it's when the shot is recorded in a way that it captures something beyond just the actual subjects that are present within the scene. Now this could be in the form of a story, a mood, or even something abstract. And I think this is why long exposure photography is quite often associated with fine art. It's because the photographers approach to record the scene differently to how it appears with their own eyes, separate it from just a quick snapshot. So with that in mind, I think there's a broad range of ideas that fit within the fine art photography spectrum, or at least how I see it. So this challenge should be an absolute breeze, shouldn't it? So let's get cracking. So I thought I'd start off with a really simple one. This place is really chaotic. There's so much going on here. So I thought it'd be great to start off with a really super simple composition with fine art in mind. So I've got this pink piece of granite here sitting on this slate, which I think, you know, is quite nice in terms of its contrast. The two stand out together, which is cool. And I'm just going to wait until the waves come around it and maybe cause some kind of swirly effect in the water. I might experiment with a few different filters, square crop, really simple. Just got to wait for the tide to come in a little bit and just create a little bit of a pattern with the water. And I think it could make quite a nice, interesting, fine art shot. And then we'll move on and see if we can find something a little more complex, shall we say. Right, here we go. to make a speedy retreat. Gareth's informed me that the tide is coming in. <laughs> He's completely out of breath. He's just sprinted back down here to tell me. It's quite treacherous, this bit of coastline. You never really know where you are in terms of getting off the beach in terms of tide. So you have to be a little bit careful. Always, always trying to beat the tide. I'm very pleased that Gareth come and got me in the end. Otherwise, I'd have been getting wet legs for sure at least. So yeah, I framed this shot up here. Now actually, we, we're confined to this very small area now, which is not ideal. Prefer to you know, stroll down the beach the other way. And we may even be able to do that a little later when the tide recedes a bit. But for now, we're confined to this one area here. So I put the telephoto lens on and I'm picking out some details in these wonderful rocks here. We've got this diagonal strata at the back there. There's a slit in the rocks, which is really nice. I've got the 10 stop filter on which is allowing me to get about a 10 second exposure, just smoothing all that water out, which is cool. Working with what we've got, which is all you can do. These conditions are really dull right now. So trying to include the sky is kind of pointless. That's why I'm really focusing in on details as opposed to the wider scene right now. 10 seconds, F13, ISO 125, 10 stop filter. Now, here's a controversial point for you. One thing that's often associated with fine art photography is photo naming. And I see it quite a lot on Instagram where photographers will name their photo after a mythical god or something similar. Now, it doesn't bother me at all, but it's not something that I do personally. In the past, I have named my prints on my website with, say, descriptive names like Mountain Storm or Mist in the Valley, but I've never named an image on Instagram. 
And I guess by naming an image with a poetic name after a Greek god or something like that, the photographer is maybe trying to elevate the value of the image from just a photo to a work of art. It'd be interesting to know what Gareth thinks about this and please do let me know what you think too. It'd be great to get a conversation going in the comments below. I think a lot of people name the photograph when there's nothing, there's no story or no interest to a picture itself. So they have to give the photograph a name just to make sure that people can look at the photograph and see what the photographer was intending. So you sometimes you'll look at a photograph and you'll see, um, I don't know, say street photography, two people sat on a beach, you'd think, well, that's just rubbish or whatever. And then they'll put a, a title underneath it, you think, oh, actually, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have interpreted, interpreted the photograph that way. So the photographer's seeing it a different way to me. So with that little title, I get why the photographer's seeing it. The text underneath it is, is cheating in a way for me because the photograph sh shouldn't need that, uh, that title to accompany it to tell me what the photographer saw. I should be able to see that. But I understand that sometimes people will take a photograph of a, of a minimal photograph like we are today and they'll put something underneath that might be heartfelt or moody to them. And then you look at it and think, okay, it makes sense why they've been drawn to that photograph because of the title. So I get it. Right. It's not something I've ever done. I do you get your point about um, adding to a story. That's quite a clever way, isn't it, of enticing people to look at the shot and maybe see something different. So that's quite an interesting point that I hadn't really considered before. So yeah, interesting stuff. Time, when we see art, from a long time ago, you'll look at a photograph and I don't understand what the significance is. If you knew the history about that era or about that painter or that, about that region, you might then look at the picture and go, oh, that, that tells a story now. Now that I know the history beyond it, it makes sense. So sometimes a caption could, could work, but I can't, I can't allow it to be a, a cop-out. It can't yeah, just be a cop-out. Yeah, if it's yeah. a crap photograph, yeah. own it as a crap photograph. Don't call it some melancholy or some, uh, some ridiculous dogma underneath the photograph just to make it more appealing. If it's a crap photograph, own it as a crap photograph. Don't use the title to polish a turd. <laughs> you heard it here first. Brilliant, Gareth, yeah. cheers. <laughs> Beautifully brief, he said. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. we're getting a glimmer of light on the horizon so we may even get a sunset fingers crossed but I've set up here for this very minimalist looking shot of this single rock and that's basically my focal point my subject to the scene so it's very minimalist and that's often associated with fine art photography isn't it and basically what I'm doing I've got the three stop filter on the front and that's allowing me to get one second exposure and I'm just waiting for the waves to crash over the rock and then as they recede, they're creating these wonderful patterns in these stony, shingly area of this sandy bay, which is really nice. Super simple. It doesn't get any simpler than this, to be honest. But I think it's quite a nice looking shot. I love the tones in the water and this moody sky we've got in the background. So here's one coming now. Let's go ahead and grab this shot. Just, it's just about waiting for the right time as the waves recede. They create all these lovely little dancey kind of squiggly patterns in the white water, which looks really nice. Fingers crossed, we may get a sunset. It's looking quite nice over there. You never know. So you might just be able to see the light behind me now and it's casting its light right on this cliff face here which is really nice actually a really interesting composition actually I've got here some wonderful geology this boulder leaning against the left hand side some vertical strata with some very very strong patterns in it We've got these dark seams amongst this iron ore which look really cool next to that there's a bit of a cascade a waterfall running down and there's some very green vegetation running up the right hand side of the image so yeah a very interesting pattern if you like this shot the very, very grey, light coloured pebbles at the bottom running through the image. So yeah, something very, very different, I think, from the rest of the images I've taken today. F11, I'm keeping my eye on the light because I really would like to get a shot back towards the light if possible. I say 125. There we go. Well, after a day of turd polishing, my only hope was for something special to happen at sunset. As the sunset passed though, I packed my bag, filmed my outro and started the walk back along the beach to meet Gareth. 
when suddenly, out of nowhere, the sky burst into flames. It was quite frankly ridiculous. So I quickly unpacked my camera and tripod and managed to find two compositions in the space of about three minutes. Sadly, I didn't have time to film it, but here are my two photos, which made the trip. If you haven't checked out Gareth's channel already, please be sure to do so. He's got some amazing content over there. It'd be really interesting to see his photos from today too. His are probably way better than mine, so it'd be interesting to see what they look like. I'll leave the link to his channel down in the description. The video up here will take you to another landscape photography video that you may find interesting. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like because that really does help me out. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content. And if you fancy supporting me further, then please do check out my photography scene. It helps to keep this channel going. Anyway, until next week, take care and I'll see you all soon.